The Obama administration has prosecuted more government officials for alleged leaks than any other administration before it, saying the safety of Americans is at risk because of the leak of highly sensitive information. But critics say it's intent, intended to send a message. NBC's investigative, national investigative correspondent Michael Lisikoff has the latest. Anyone who claims to know North Korea is either, either a fool or a liar. Stephen Kim was one of the U.S. government's top experts on North Korea. He's now facing trial and 15 years in prison for allegedly leaking classified information to a Fox News reporter, a charge Kim adamantly denies. They are trying to send a message to government employees, if you leak, we will get you. The Obama administration is cracking down hard on suspected leakers, bringing a half dozen criminal prosecutions, more than any previous president. Leaks related to national security can put people at risk. And it's going after the media to find them. The Justice Department confirms it secretly subpoenaed two months of phone records from the offices of the Associated Press to track down who leaked a story about a foil bomb threat in Yemen. The scope of the subpoena kicked up a storm of controversy. I don't know who did it or why it was done, but it's inexcusable. And there's no way to justify this. They were the Hartford Bureau, the New York Bureau, the Washington Bureau, the Bureau in the House of Representatives. And those AP reporters are not alone. These court records obtained by NBC News show that in their efforts to convict Stephen Kim, prosecutors obtained phone and cell phone records of Fox News journalists, as well as one reporter's private emails. Prosecutors targeting a former CIA officer of leaking also obtained the bank and credit card records of James Risen, a prize-winning New York Times reporter. They're even threatening to put Risen in jail if he doesn't testify. There is a rising sense inside the government that there are more leaks of classified information now than there have been in the past, and something needs to be done to crack down on it. Chuck, and this isn't over yet. No. Uh, sources familiar with the matter say that prosecutors may be closing in on yet another alleged leaker who provided classified information about the Stuxnet computer virus to disrupt the Iranian nuclear program to the New York Times. That's one to watch. All right, I, I want to play a clip from Gary Prubit of the Associated Press from over the weekend because here is the probably the most chilling effect that all of these stories have on us as potential as, as trying to get reports out there. Here's what he said. I think that it will hurt journalism. In fact, we're already seeing some impact. Already, officials that would normally talk to us and people we talk to in the normal course of news gathering are already saying to us that they're a little reluctant to talk to us. They fear that they, they will be monitored by the government. Uh, this it, monitoring situation is a huge exactly. issue because phones, it, it, the, the law is written, you and I were just discussing, the law is written in an arca arcane way. They only have to tell us when they've gotten our phone records. Exactly. And routinely, without any notice to the news media at all, they're getting emails, they're getting text messages. There's all sorts of ways that they have of getting information now, electronic trail in the, in the uh, Jim Risen case, bank records, credit card records, credit card reports of the journalist, travel records, all to try to prove that uh, he got uh, an, an illegal leak from a, uh, from a CIA uh, officer. So we're just seeing in many respects yeah. the tip of the iceberg of the way these investigations are being conducted and the totality of it is a very chilling. Throw away cell phones. I guess that's what's going to be <laughs> the next thing we're all going to get uh, given. Uh, yeah. There's anyway, Michael Isikoff on the on this story. It's an important story, not just a journalist, but the public needs to understand why this is important to them. Anyway, thank you, all sir. Right. Up next, with just a few hours left before voters go to the polls, our deep dive into L.A.'s potentially history-making mayor's race, plus head of the class, the president gets personal, as both he and the first lady seek to inspire and challenge college graduates over the weekend. And they weren't the only ones dishing out advice this weekend, apparently. Live television is nothing compared to keeping a bunch of 20-somethings attention long enough before they turn me into a snarky hashtag. <laughs> so this is your challenge. Help us lead us out of this mess. Build and grow an America that will uh, be a shining city on a hill again. Be willing to tackle big problems instead of using politics as an excuse to avoid them. If you're a Democrat, go hug a Republican. If you're a conservative, go hug a liberal or at least retweet them. 
Look, we're changing fast. Simply trying to survive and let someone else deal with these problems and these issues won't work. Your job is to embrace the struggle.